Hi, Craig Barr here. We're going to take a look at creating some cavity maps in Mudbox. And to do that, we're going to use um, this nifty little ball o lizard, a little lizard ball, I guess we'll call it. It's a good little uh, piece of data just to, to illustrate um, how we want to uh, calculate or extract out some cavity maps. So, what exactly is a cavity map? Well, um, it, much like an ambient occlusion map, it's actually based off the same idea. A cavity map is going to get all that tight little detail, all those creases and all that minute uh, detail that really brings out your overall sculpted effects and can certainly help in uh, creating your texture mapping. So it's an excellent thing to add or multiply over top of your diffuse mapping when you're painting within Mudbox here. Um, or as well within other programs outside, so 2D image programs. So there are a couple ways that we can handle cavity maps within Mudbox. Uh, the first thing I think we should take a look at are the Viewport Filters tab. Since Mudbox 2011 Subscription Advantage Pack, um, we've introduced a new ambient occlusion filter, which is the Cavity Ambient Occlusion. Now I'm using Mudbox 2012, and this is fully implemented into there now as well. So if you're not running Mudbox 2012, I encourage you to grab the trial and give it a go. So the cavity ambient occlusion, um, unlike ambient occlusion, if we turn that on, uh, just at the default setting here, you see we get some nice little kind of shadowing uh, type of effects here around the details, and that's fine. But cavity ambient occlusion is going to give that finer detail in those cracks here. And of course in our viewport filters, I can start to dial in um, a higher or better setting on there and then maybe up the strength value on that. So you can see that it's really emphasizing all of those details, all the cracks in between all of those scales, uh, as well as these little spikes, all these different things on here. Now, this is useful for uh, many things. Aside from showing the details in here, we can use this to really help out um, in painting up our texture maps, our diffuse map, for example. So while we're in here with the viewport filter, we can use this for presentation of our model, we can certainly render out screen images, we can record movies, um, and, and turntable movies as well. So it certainly helps in that process. So how can we extract this to use in our texturing process? Well, let's take a look at that. So if we go back to our layers here, I'm going to just show the paint layers. And the reason why I want to do that is we have the ability to actually extract the map and bring it right into your paint layers to work with our blending modes here on Mudbox. So let's start with our Maps menu here. I'm going to go underneath Extract Texture Maps and hit New Operation. And I'm just going to select for my maps to generate an ambient occlusion map. Now once we go in here, I'm going to leave this here, um, my base sphere I'm using, level 0. And my source model is the highest level, sub, highest level of subdivision, level 6. So that's the level that I sculpted that detail on. Now interesting thing to note here, uh, we can actually do multiple models. So if you have a bunch of different pieces of uh, geometry, a bunch of different objects overlapping each other, we can use that as well in the generation of these maps. So let's take a look at what we have here. For our output map, the default quality is good. For our example, I'm just going to put it down to fastest because that will actually produce pretty decent results for what we need to do in this quick uh, overview here. I'm just going to leave it at 1K, and I don't really care about the anti-aliasing for this as well. Now, just to show the difference between a default ambient occlusion and a cavity map, I'm going to leave these settings in here. Our primary concern for this is the filter setting, and we'll get into what that does exactly there in a minute. I'm just going to leave this here, I'm going to call this uh, AO Base. I'm going to leave it as a PNG as well. So what that's going to do for me now um, is generate out a map and we've defined our base file name as you can see in there. And I'm just going to use a PNG format. And then if I hit extract, it's going to be quite quick. You'll see that we're going to get a nice default ambient occlusion map. So that was pretty quick. Um, and if I close that, you'll see now in our paint, we now have a paint layer in here and it's brought in that ambient occlusion. Well, the interesting thing here is that on a normal level here, it's just going to bring in this kind of white or gray map with the black on here. And then if we multiply that in over our base level, you'll see that we're getting some of that effect in there. So if we turn that on and off, we're getting kind of a nice ambient occlusion effect in there. So that's fine. Let's take a look at what will, what will happen to uh, um, 
and the difference between an ambient occlusion map and something that uh, we want to generate here, which is our cavity map. So I'm going to change this file name here to cavity. We'll call it cavity 1K because that's what we're working with. And our main little um, feature that we want to affect here, a parameter that we want to change, is the filter uh, attribute. Now what the filter does is typically you would use this in the opposite way. So if you're getting a bunch of artifacts here in your ambient occlusion map, you can start increasing that, uh, that value there. And what that actually will do is it will um, uh, reduce any visual artifacts that appear in your extracted map. So the filter effectively controls the filtering of the shadow map calculations used in building out your ambient occlusion map. So what we want to do for a cavity map is actually go the opposite direction. I'm going to go pretty low here, all the way down to about this point zero 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 one. You don't have to go that low at all. This is something where you'd want to experiment to see the type of details that you want. And again, just for this example, let's leave it at fastest. We'll leave it at 1K. Uh, I'm not going to get into anti-aliasing uh, anti there. And let's hit extract. And once again, you'll see this is really quick. It's really fast in here. Um, and it's interesting to note, I'm, I've uh, actually set in there for it to create a paint layer. Let's just take a look at that before, just so you can see what we're doing here. If I go back into this one, um, you'll see at the bottom here, preview as diffuse. So that's going to create a paint layer for us, right? So it's actually going to apply it as a paint layer in there for us to work with that. So let's close that. And that's what it's done here. So we have our base and then we have our new one. Uh, that we've created in here. So it's just going to give us a white and black map because it's just a solid texture map here. But if we hit multiply on that, it's going to multiply with our underlying material color. And you can see the difference between these two maps here uh, is quite huge. We're getting all of this detail, all these creases and things in here. And again, I just used the fastest uh, low res method here. Now, if, we get, if we're happy with this here, we can start to go in and dial up something much higher. We could use our best setting. We could use a much higher resolution. We can affect the uh, overall shadow map resolution we want to work with, things like that. But for a basic setting here, this actually does a pretty decent job. Now, there's a couple of cool things that we can do with this. We've, we've just written out a cavity map that's going to take a look at all of these little creases in between. That gives us a really nice effect there. It's certainly emphasizes all of that sculpted detail in there. Um, we've multiplied it in there and of course we have the ability to adjust the strength on that. So if you don't want it all the way up and of course you can go above that, I can actually increase that even higher just by multiplying up the overall strength on that. But let's leave it at 100 for now. I'm actually going to turn that one off because what we're going to do is something kind of interesting here with this. So We've generated out a cavity map just to show how this filter works here. I'm actually going to do the opposite. I'm going to do a negative filter effect on there. And I'm going to call this cav inverse or INV for short. We want to preview it as a paint layer. And let's hit extract on that. You'll see once again how quick this is. Now, this is going to give us a pretty ugly result at first here, but we can do some interesting things with this here as well. Um, what do we want to do with this here? So what we want to do with this is actually um, do more of a linear dodge or an adding of this effect. The reason why I want to do this is that I'm actually looking at generating kind of the higher areas rather than those lower detailed areas. Now this is much of, much uh, like what we'd get using a dry brush paint brush here in Mudbox where if we paint we're only getting the high areas. Um, or if we inverse, we can get the low areas. But in this case here, we've created a cavity map that's looking at the bottom in those little creases here. And now we've created a map that's actually grabbing the inverse or the high areas. So that's actually really handy. A quick way to get um, kind of a higher effect. And we can certainly do a lot of things with that. Now here's something really neat. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate my uh, layer in here to show you something interesting in here. So we'll turn off the cavity maps there. And then with our higher area here, we now have a Mudbox 2012 and adjust color window. And what I can do with that, I don't have to sit with that white value there. I can start to work with that um, and create a couple different effects. So let's play with something here. Uh, let's dial the red down. 
And maybe what we can do is work with something in the green uh, channel here. Just start to bring that up. Just play with this overall. There we go. We're starting to get some results in there. And maybe the blue, if we bring that down, there we go. It's going to bring up a little more green. Bring, keep that down. Go back to our green here. Just see how much green we're getting with that. That's fine. And maybe work with our overall value on that. So you're seeing that we're actually adjusting that overall um, color value of that. We've just taken the white and we're playing with the channels RGB in there and we're getting uh, a nice different little effect on there. Now um, of course with our cavity map in there we can start to dial that in or bring that in and affect the color on that as well. Um, a couple of other interesting things that we can do. We're stuck, we have the black here, we're not stuck with that of course as well. That's why I duplicated this. I want to take my color and start to play this. I'm just doing this quickly. I mean, of course, we can export at any time. Uh, for example, with this one here, any of these channels, we can export the entire channel or even just the layer um, to Photoshop. So we can export as a PSD and do even further uh, adjustments on that. But let's go back to this guy here and just quickly look at something interesting here. So just really quickly, uh, we can start to play with some of these channels again in here. Um, and we can get these different kind of color effects in here. So here I'm working with kind of a red. And of course, by all means, we can change all of these different. So I'm really getting a nice red kind of thing in there. If we play with this, we can get different kind of maybe yellow effects or things like that. This will be fine. I'm going to leave it as that. Or maybe we'll bring our saturation up on that a bit. There we go. So you see that I'm now getting kind of this red overall effect for our cavity map. And there's red. I mean, certainly we can get any different color we want. And of course, once again, I can export the entire channel or just this layer um, out to a PSD format and do even more, uh, take even more um, control or take advantage of the tools within Photoshop, for example, to adjust that further. So that is kind of an overall um, overview of what you can do with cavity maps here in Mudbox, how you can generate them, how you can adjust them. And of course, I didn't even get into any of these paint tools. We can adjust the contrast on the fly. We can even invert. We can in use an invert brush here, um, much like I used an inverse uh, version of this by generating this cavity inverse to get the higher levels on here. We can start to invert that and paint these things out. We have all these nice handy dodge and burn and sponge for saturation brushes in here as well. And if you build up a whole bunch of different maps and you want to keep those, um, the quickest way to work with that is to actually go underneath the file menu here and export all paint layers. And you can write out all those texture maps for you as well. Of course, it's really handy again to export the channel as a PSD. Then you can write it out into any format quickly after you do some editing externally as well. So I hope that was useful for generating some cavity maps from Mudbox. Thanks.